I'm lucky enough to live in London, you know, which is one of the most uh, multicultural and creative cities of the world. And being surrounded by so many great galleries and bookstores and creative people in, in general, I'm also inspired a lot by the music scene, which is constantly changing and so much amazing new music is being made all the time. I do a fair bit of traveling and when I travel, I, you know, bring a lot of nice music with me and since quite often just just come up with visual images in your head sometimes, you know, and, and that's where the idea maybe comes from. I, I, it can relate to, I guess, an old book you looked in or an exhibition you went to years ago and, and some bits from that kind of inspired you and that pops up in your head again when you listen to certain music. But that's how I really start, I think. And then the technical things comes after that. That's when I start thinking, okay, is this possible? Can I do that? I don't have so much time to shoot as much personal work as, um, as I'd like to these days, but I see the editorial work I do as a very close to some of the personal work um, because I get to experiment with techniques and, uh, and different concepts. I think commissions from record labels and editorial commissions normally offer a very open brief and lots of creative freedom. So taking me back to the beginning when I started shooting for um, for ID, I was commissioned by the art director Dean Langley, who used to art direct ID back then. And that was a nice little story to one of the one of the first editorials I did, which was for um, a band called Artie Bronson's Outfit. And uh, I remember having to travel down to um, this pub in Wandsworth, and um, I was supposed to meet the three guys in the pub. And when I came down there, I um, found that only two of the guys turned up and uh, apparently the third guy had to attend a daytime job. So um, luckily, in the back room, I found this big Elvis photograph and uh, kindly asked the guy from the label if he would mind holding this um, image and sit down as being the third person. Um, but I think that's, that's quite typical for shooting editorials. I mean, you, you're forced to, to think quite quickly and, uh, and you're getting used to, to come up with, with alternative solutions when, when you have to. I think, I mean, musicians are, you know, they aren't model, they, models, they, they're more real people. And although they're used to, to performing on, on the stage, I think a lot of musicians find it um, quite hard to being photographed. I'll go as far as say some musicians hate being photographed. So I try and um, work with some kind of concepts or to use different lighting techniques and sometimes prop to visualise and bring um, the artist's music to life and, and try and bring out some of their personality. It's also, again, like really important for me to listen a lot to the artist's music um, on repeat before I go into a project to get a more clear idea where to take the concepts. The Claxon shoot was, uh, was a great project to work on. That all came about when uh, I was out one night with my, my good friend uh, and art director Richard Robinson. and We were in our local pub and we met Jamie from, from Claxon's in the pub and, and Richard and Jamie knew each other. And that night we just talked about trying to get involved doing their artwork for the new album campaign. And I think as the night went along, Someone mentioned something with a cat in a space suit and this kind of drunken conversation. You know, I didn't think anything was going to come out of it. But a couple of days later, Ritz and me got a call from the record label and Claxons wanted to have this cat in a space suit on the, on the record cover. And uh, it, it actually won album cover of the year. I mean, the, the space suit is, is an original space suit we had to hire from America. There's a lot of copyright restrictions with NASA because they had the, the original NASA logos on. So Ritz had to design some, some, some Claxons logos that was then being sewn on, like temporarily. One of my most recent favorite projects was probably when I did a shoot for um, Farfetch uh, a little while ago, where I photographed the DJ Lil Silver. And I think the reason why was like the shoot kind of enabled me to create some existing lighting ideas I worked with before, but also to take them into a whole new body of work. And on that project, I, I collaborated with the art director, Peter Stitston, and uh, we got some really strong graphic images from the shoot, which, which, which the whole team was happy with. Maya Jane Coles. I shot her for an editorial for a German music magazine called Groove. I prepared myself, which I do sometimes these days when I shoot editorial, I kind of 
try and have something planned you know it's, it's like I can it's for me it's like I can test something like some kind of idea I've walked around with for a while and with the glitter I, I kind of t did a small test in my studio before and I knew it was gonna gonna work and it was something I could do rather quickly so on, on the editorial shoot I shot her with a glitter shot as well and and it, it seemed to work and Maya then liked it so much that she actually came back and approached me and asked if I wanted to do her album cover after that one of the really early album covers, I think it was the first album cover I actually shot. It was with Richard uh, Robinson. It was like the second project we ever, we ever did together. And Richard had this idea about using the water because they were called invisible. And, and we talked a lot about how to get this, you know, how to capture the water best with lights. And I mean, we had a little padding pool they were standing in. And then we had lots of people throwing water at them. And I think we did that for about five or six hours continuously. <laughs> so, uh, so there was a lot of patience from the band's point of view and I think they were just really into getting a strong album cover at the time. I mean with the objects I think it's if you're under, a bit under pressure with time or something and you do an editorial you try either to come to the shoot with a concept and if if you need something more straight up I think an interesting object can kind of make the image more exciting and, uh, and sometimes give the person you're photographing kind of take his attention away from being photographed and, and try and focus, focus on something different. On the Africa High Tech we worked with uh, Andy Gilmore. So the idea of that project was that we wanted to try and get the guys into the artwork somehow. So we, uh, we hired like a, a really powerful projector and then and again, we did a lot of like, you know, to get the projection right, to kind of get as little shadow as possible, so it really looked like they were in the artwork. The last year or so, I've been, I've been working with um, uh, Roberto, who's the art director, who does all the stuff for Fabric Nightclub. It has been a bit different working with Fabric and some of the projects because they never really feature the artist on, on the cover, so um, it's a quite, interesting brief where normally it can't really necessarily relate to music as such but you still have to kind of do something visually so we get a lot of creative freedom to come up with with ideas for these projects and it can be anything from like a still life to um, the latest projects we've done where it's been about smashing a glass on someone's head <laughs> i had for a long time this idea about shooting a person running through a wall of glass and um, we bought like a lot of glass plates, which um, wasn't uh, real glass, and uh, kind of got some models. And by dropping them from the top on top of their heads, you get this effect of smashing glass. Working with uh, music today, I think it's quite closely related to fashion. Another interesting project I've been working on uh, recently was the new lookbook for Aito Troop. This new collection has been on its way for something like six years, I think. I mean, the amount of uh, tailoring and craftsmanship and, and the whole idea about this collection is, is really mind-blowing. Aito had this idea about, you know, that Sergio was, was jumping, so he's like, it looks like he's kind of floating in air. I mean, he did do... I don't know, about 500 jumps in the day or something, so, uh, <laughs> so well done. But I think, I think it was worth it in the end of the day. And then in between each take, I was um, trying to do some more kind of reportage quick shots of, of him when he was a bit less aware of being, being photographed. In general, I really like to go into a shoot and, and execute the, the concept we kind of planned, but also sometimes to try and get something extra if there is time to do that. And sometimes that ends up being, being the actual shot. <laughs> Pleasure Principle was, uh, was a really interesting project to work on. I worked with the uh, art director, Adam Rogers, and he had this like big neon sign made up. And we had a meeting about it, and we talked about interesting locations around London. It all kind of resulted in us hiring a big generator and meeting up on a really cold winter night when it was dark and I think it was raining <laughs> and uh, and then we, we drove around uh, to all these different spots in London and actually hang the sign up in in different places and location and and shot it and uh, it's, it's again it's all shot in camera there's no 
There's no Photoshop. We had some flashlights with us as well, so from time to time we needed to light up an area. We were doing that and then doing long exposures to make sure the sign was still standing out in the shot. I've had this idea for, for quite a long time when I wanted to, to shoot people jumping into the water and kind of capturing the moment when they just hit the water and uh, I approached it to the art director, Gemma Fletcher, and uh, we had a good meeting about it. And she said, oh, why don't you capture the people when they hit the water, but we also shoot them when they come up from the water? Wanted to do a whole shoot based on water, so we decided to, to shoot some, some more portraits through um, a big water tank, where we would have a tank lying on the floor, and then we would place the models underneath the tank so they were actually completely dry. I always been really fascinating uh, with, with water, I think, and I think the idea just probably comes from somewhere in my childhood. I loved diving when I was a kid, and I think that, that moment when you're out of breath and you, you're just coming up, you know, um, with such a powerful way of coming up from the water, and I think that's, that's really exciting to, to, to capture that in an image. I mean, I think in, in general, I like shooting stuff on camera. I mean, if you, if you look at back on one of the very first artwork commissions I did with, with Richard, this piece of Lou Hayter, um, The New Sense, which was actually back then shot on film, but it was still, it was all, it's a triple exposure image. It was all shot in, in one frame. Again, I think that was a low budget back then, so, you know, we had maybe about five, six rolls of film for the whole project. And I think that tradition from not just shooting thousands of images is something that's carried on to the way I'm working today, but in digital. And when I do my um, lighting tricks or some of my more colourful work today, I tend to do everything in camera still. So whether it's from the Clock Opera campaign, we always start out with, with shooting those multiple exposures in camera. Um, we're working with a dance group called New Movement. We're all, they're all shot in camera, so it's again no Photoshop. And then that project was then coloured in afterwards to get it a more kind of painterly feel. And I think that carries into to a lot of the work I do today. I'm never ever retouching stuff in that wasn't really there in the image already. And I think I do like that thing, those little mistakes you sometimes get with shooting stuff in camera. Uh, I find them really interesting, I mean, especially in this digital age where, you know, an image can't really, everything goes through Photoshop, a lot of stuff is manipulated and I find when you shoot stuff in camera, you kind of, I mean, like the Gold Panda DJ Kick shoot I did or the, the previous editorial I did for Gold Panda, you, you just get these little mistakes on the image. I mean, some people call them mistakes, but I quite like them. I think that's stuff you did you do fake it in Photoshop, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get them. You know, you would make it too perfect almost. Looking at my own work, it's, uh, it's quite diverse, I would say. You know, I'm doing things from like, almost like a still life to doing something energetic to doing something still. And I think that I'd like to see myself as, as being a photographer who keep inventing myself and keep pushing, um, my boundaries into different genres. I don't necessarily want to be locked in, in this thing saying I'm here only does music because I think you know you can do inter interesting stuff in all different genres these days you know it's, it's for me it's all about being creative I think and get the opportunities to produce amazing images. <laughs>